Hello, fellow movie crusaders, and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be reviewing the Mel Gibson hurricane action film, Force of Nature. Now, this movie, it wasn't going to get released in theaters. It was probably going to go just straight to video on demand. But, like I said, with theaters not being open right now and a lot of the mainstream movies not getting released, a lot of these movies are going to pop up on my radar that they normally wouldn't pop up, up on... Uh, any given time if there wasn't a pandemic going on, but I saw this trailer and it was intriguing enough for me to definitely check it out. Cause it's got some actors and actresses in it that I really liked back in the day that they had a lot of potential to do something really great. Um, and then haven't really heard from them a lot lately. So when I saw this cast, um, a part of this and the trailer didn't look half bad, I definitely was like, let's check this movie out and see exactly, uh, how this movie goes. It could go either way. It could be really, really bad or it could be, pretty good um so let's go ahead and hop into the review and see exactly what i thought of force of nature uh force of nature uh the general plot is that it, it takes place in puerto rico and a giant hurricane is about to hit uh the countryside and emil hirsch's character um Car cardello i think his name is cardello uh he is tasked to go with a rookie partner um jess played by stephanie uh Cayo. Uh, to go to this apartment complex and try to get any remaining um, residents or, or uh, people out of the hotel or out of the apartment complex, so that way they can, you know, get be safe from the storm. And of course, there is Mel Gibson, who's a retired cop who's on dialysis, and his daughter um, Kate Bosworth, uh, who plays Troy. Um, they're she they're there, and he's trying to get them out. But while they're trying to get Mel Gibson and um, Kate Bosworth's character out of the apartment and other characters as well. Uh, there is a crime group uh, led by um, David Zayas, who plays John uh, the Baptist. Uh, they are trying to break into a certain resident's apartment because they have Nazi paintings that are worth millions upon millions of dollars. And they're using the hurricane as a cover to try and get in. Thus, once they see Emil Hirsch's and, and uh, Stephanie uh, Kayo's cops characters there, madness ensues in the middle of a hurricane. And that's basically the general plot of Force of Nature. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that could have gone right or wrong based on this movie. There's a reason probably why this movie didn't make it to the theaters uh, because it probably wasn't going to be a good film. And you would be right. Uh, this movie is not a good movie at all. It's got a lot, I mean a lot of problems. And we all thought Artemis Fowl was one of the worst movies of the year. And I think this one has it beat. Um, there's one thing about movies today that people have been doing that are, is really one of my biggest pet peeves. And have, there's no reason to do it. There isn't at all. And TV shows do it too. There is no reason to start a movie with an action sequence that it happens 45 minutes to an hour into the film just to start the movie off that way. And that's what happens here with Forces of Nature. The, the opening scene is literally a fight scene that happens about 45 minutes in, and it leaves you kind of, oh, what's going to happen with this character? But it's like, look, this, this, this scene in particular is in the trailer, and there was no need to start the movie off that way because then we're, like I said, we're 45 minutes away from that even happening, now, the actual start of the movie, once we get this scene out of the way, is a is the right way to start a movie and, and should have been the way they should have done it in the first place. I can't stand when directors decide, let's cut uh, and put this action sequence that has no basis of anything going on right at the beginning to try to set everyone off. Because here's the problem. The movie's actually got to start, and then you got to slow it down for the next 20 minutes with nothing happening. And then you're basically putting people to sleep because you you started them off with a se action sequence, and then you're dropping them down to nothing. It's a poorly edited, poorly directed choice, and that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this movie. This movie is poorly directed. The action sequences aren't anything to to really be excited about. Um, and even when they do fight uh, with the with the hurricane going on, it's hard to see anything going on while it's in it. The performances are very lackluster. I'm a huge fan of Emil Hirsch. I've liked him in things like. Uh, the Girl Next Door, Alpha Dog, Into the Wild. Um, but in this film, the whole time I was watching this movie, I kept going, 
who are you reminding me of? You're, you're, you're doing an impersonation of somebody, and I just can't put my finger on it. And about at the halfway part, part of the movie, I finally remembered who he was doing. And he's basically doing Leonardo DiCaprio's The Departed. And the whole time I'm watching this movie, I was like, yeah, you're basically doing a bad Leonardo DiCaprio impression. Now, he's not doing a Boston accent or anything, but he's trying his best to do as much of a spot-on Leo impression. And Emil Hirsch is like a way more talented actor than having to go to that level of trying to basically look like he's impersonating Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, for most people watching this, they probably aren't going to notice that. But for me, it's stuck out like a sore thumb. Mel Gibson, he's basically just coughing his way through this movie because he's on a dialysis machine. Half his scenes are just kind of the whole way through. He clearly doesn't care about the movie he's in. Um, and he's clearly there for just a paycheck, which sadly – that's just the way Mo Gibson is now. He was probably one of the best action heroes through the eighties and nineties. And then obviously other things outside of the movie industry happened. And this is what we've gotten out of him now. Uh, this is definitely not a movie that makes you go. I wish Mel Gibson was in more movies. This is one of those where you're going, uh, that's, this is Mel Gibson now. Uh, Kate Bosworth. She does a solid uh, job. She's probably the one actress in this film that, well, Stephanie Kyle's fine too. It's just her character's, just kind of there reacting. She doesn't really get a whole lot to do in the movie. Kate Bosworth, um, she does a solid job in the movie. I, I haven't seen her do anything in quite a while, and I actually didn't mind her performance in this. And David uh, Zayas, John, who plays John the Baptist, I loved him in Dexter, but his dialogue is so cringeworthy, and it's not because he's performing it badly. It's literally the script. Um, but his, his dialogue is so poorly written that it's very hard to take his performance seriously at all. There's also a subplot with another tenant um, having a certain thing in its in his apartment that has no reason to be there except for, oh, this is going to become something at the end of the film. And even that thing that happens at the end of the film, it's not worth it. And you can see it telegraphed from a mile away. And you're just like, okay, clearly they're setting this up for this one thing that literally has no basis to be in this movie. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, this movie is just trash. It's so bad. It's not good. It's an eye roll. Like with Artemis Fowl, yes, it's a it's a really bad movie. But you could tell that they were trying and in certain respects, but it ultimately was just a failure from the start. This movie, it's one of those that they just made to make a cheap buck, put it on video on demand, and hope that people will literally watch it because of the names involved, which guilty. Um but yeah, I definitely cannot recommend this movie. This is easily, as of right now, the worst film of the year. I find it very hard to believe that I will find a movie worse than this movie this year. So definitely I do not recommend watching this film. And going to my overall score, I'm going to give Force of Nature a 1 out of 10. I don't think I've ever given a movie a score of a 1 out of 10 on this channel. Um, so it's a first here, everybody. A 1 out of 10 because this movie was just bad. Um, but yeah, that's the review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go ahead and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up in the Sean's Movie Crusades. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, like I said, we got a few movies coming out because there was a lot of movies that came out on Friday. Uh, we got Dave Batista's uh, family spy film, My Spy. Uh, we got... Um, I'm going to get to this movie eventually. It came out in May, uh, high notes. I'm going to get to it, I swear. Um, you guys probably don't care about this movie, but I'm going to try my best to watch it and review it for you guys. Uh, Steve Carell's political comedy, Irresistible, and, of course, Netflix's um, Will Ferrell, Rachel McAdams uh, comedy, uh, Euro song so or Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga. So all those are coming down, uh, so be on the lookout for those on the channel. And until next time, in case I don't see you, Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.